Chapter 21, flying through this. It was a long walk back to his hole. Stanley looked out through the haze of heat and dirt at the other boys, lowering and raising their shovels. <clears throat> Excuse me. Group D was the farthest away. He realized that once again he'd be digging long after everyone else quit. He hoped he'd finish before Mr. Sir recovered. He didn't want to be out there alone when he came. He won't die, the warden had said, unfortunately for you. Walking across the desolate wasteland, Stanley thought about his great-grandfather, not the pig stealer, but the pig stealer's son, the one who was robbed by kissing Kate Barlow. He tried to imagine how he must have felt after kissing Kate left him stranded in the desert. It probably wasn't a whole lot different from the way he felt now. Kate Barlow had left his great-grandfather to face the hot, barren desert. The warden had left Stanley to face Mr. Sir. Somehow, his great-grandfather had survived for 17 days before he was rescued by a couple rattlesnake hunters. He was insane when they found him. When he was asked how he lived for so long, he said he found refuge on God's thumb. He spent nearly a month in the hospital. He ended up marrying one of the nurses. Nobody ever knew what he meant by God's thumb, including himself. Stanley heard a twitching sound. He stopped mid-step, one foot still in the air. A rattlesnake lay coiled beneath his foot. Ugh. Its tail was pointed upwards and rattling. Stanley backed his leg away, then turned and ran. The rattlesnake didn't chase after him. It rattled its tail to warn him to stay away. Whew, thanks for the warning, Stanley whispered as his heart pounded. A rattlesnake would be a lot more dangerous if it didn't have a rattle. Hey, caveman, said Armpit, you're still alive. What did the warden say, asked X-Ray. What'd you tell her, said Magnet. Well, I told her, told her that I stole the seeds, said Stanley. Good going, said Magnet. What'd she do? Stanley shrugged one shoulder and said, ah, nothing. She got it mis mad at Mr. Sir for bothering her. He didn't feel like going into details. If he didn't talk about it, then maybe it didn't happen. He went over to his hole and to his surprise, it was nearly finished. He stared at it amazed. It didn't make sense. Or perhaps it did. He smiled. Since he had taken the blame for the seeds, he realized the other boys had dug his hole for him. Hey, thanks, he said. Don't look at me, said X-Ray. Confused, Stanley looked around. Magnet, armpit, zigzag, squid. None of them had helped. Then he turned to Zero, who had been quietly digging in his hole since Stanley's return. <laughs> but Zero's hole was smaller than all the others. Oh. And there's Mabel. See you later.